well, it's a bit of a love story in a way. <laughs> I sort of describe it as a very successful business from, yeah, very meagre start. I wanted to be a, uh, a pilot since I was a young kid. I was always a bit of a science geek in my squadron, and uh, that was one of the reasons I, I set myself a goal of um, becoming a test pilot. So 1995, off to the UK, to the uh, Empire Test Pilot School, the oldest test pilot school in the world. It's been a year there flying all sorts of aircraft from uh, Jaguars, uh, Hunters, Hawks to Andover's BAC 111s. I've never worked so hard in my life, but done one of the, the highlights of my uh, my time in the Air Force. And then it was time to come back to uh, to Adelaide to the Aircraft Research and Development Unit. Well, we actually met at the Flight Testing Unit at RG, the Aircraft Research and Development Unit. A lot of the work I did then was testing new weapon systems, new system upgrades and other bits and pieces, doing things with uh, different weapons at Woomera. And we worked together for many years, uh, testing and evaluating F-18s. I thought if I was going to be the Chief of Air Force one day, um, having an MBA would be useful. When I was doing the MBA, I, uh, I wrote a business plan about an independent engineering professional services organisation. We were flying to RAF Base Williamtown in a PC-9. I threw this business plan over the back. I said, what do you think of it? Isn't that just one of your assignments? I'm not reviewing your assignments for you. And I said, when are we starting the company? I had the best job in the world. I was a flight test civilian. So it was a, it was a big decision for me to leave. They were going to do this without taking a salary. Cal and I were both earning enough money to keep us all eating. So we had to stay working and support this venture. So let's give it a go and then we won't have any regrets looking back and thinking, well, I wish that we'd tried it. It was very much a family affair. Without uh, our partners, uh, bluntly, it just would have never happened. We did take a risk, but it all worked out in the end. <laughs> we were very fortunate in the early days of Nova to attract some really fabulous people and we grew from there. So it was just a, a good team who looked after each other, um, took pride not only in their own personal work, but more importantly took pride in the work of the organisation and what, what we could collectively achieve. If you look after the people and you maintain a strong people culture, you, the success of the business is going to be great. When it comes to the company's wellbeing and, and us achieving what we want to achieve, it's, it's like doing the right thing for the, for the nation. Uh, if we haven't got those right people, then you won't achieve it. Well, I started to have these aspirations that we could make something that would one day be a really great institution. When we first started to go from having just, you know, basically people sitting at a desk doing stuff to actually putting whole teams together to run things, and some of those water projects really involved some quite, you know, significant teams of uh, Nova people, and I think that was just, um, it was just really, really satisfying to see that we could do it and, uh, and to realise that, um, as I say, we had a genuine capability and that I think um, you know, our customers valued that capability. It's about wanting to grow a fantastic organisation that encourages individuals to exceed and excel. If you look at our profit margins, they are very, very slim because all that money is going back into the people, uh, going back into our innovation programs, uh, in growing our systems to make sure the company's robust. Uh, well, as we've, we've developed across different areas of expertise, um, as we've grown in magnitude and just size and the ability of us to really take on some quite significant projects, the realisation's been there that, um, that we can actually do things that actually do have serious impact. The challenges of global warming, of food, of water, of security, many of the other great you know, uh, challenges that I think humanity has and the world has, um, I firmly believe will be solved by scientists, technologists, engineers. We've got a better defence force because of the, what we've provided over the last almost 20 years. Um, we're now working in, in other sectors, in um, rail and um, aerospace, gas and oil sectors, and they're doing a great job helping them run their operations a lot more efficiently. We're saving lots of money, making them more profitable, and by the way, doing that, cutting the carbon outputs from those organisations. So a lot of the people have got that additional passion in life. We want to look after the globe. We want to look after our planet, our home. We really, really do have the potential to create something really great and really solve some problems that matter. To see these interesting, engaged people who 
could choose to work for anyone and they've chosen us. So I, th I think that's what makes me really, really proud. Yeah, it's like, wow, look at this, where this company has got to. I think one of the proudest moments for me was when the head of what was the Defence Material Organisation basically came to Nova and he said, look, we really need some help on a project in involving some electronic warfare equipment. Um, we really need some help and we need an, uh, an organisation that's independent and that we can genuinely trust. It was the first time that I realised that clients and people thought that uh, the organisation really could do a good job and had credibility. They did trust us to make some pretty important decisions. One of the real hands-on tasks that I just absolutely loved was the Japanese wanted to come to Australia to test their next generation supersonic aircraft. I was basically the Commonwealth Safety Officer. I'd be sitting next to the Japanese Safety Officer in Mission Control launching rockets and to see these giant rockets launch, that was one of my dreams is, is rockets and astronauts and all that sort of stuff. So actually being a, a critical part of that program was just absolutely amazing. Really see Nova as a leader. Look, their diversification into other industries, their credibility makes them the leader that they are today. The last 20 years, I think, have been the proudest moments of my life. The people around me that I've managed to work with, I can't even believe the skills and the amazing capabilities of the people around me, and they're just wonderful people. That's one of the, the biggest achievements, not doing the biggest task or winning the biggest contract, it is having the biggest company of the best people. I summarise it as an absolutely fabulous ride, it's just been, um, you know, fantastic fun. I think we're doing great things, you know, we're, we're, we're now the largest uh, privately owned Australian defence company, an organisation that genuinely cares about what it does and cares about its people. My vision for the next 20 years is We've got to maintain that culture. Being proud to be working for Nova and, and doing the right thing, achieving amazing things. And that's what I think we need to do. The best company in Australia that every other company can aspire to and really get Australia back into the forefront with, with technology.